So Brexit is a shit show. I'm sure everyone in the music industry wishes a plague of locusts on anyone in the UK who voted for it or any politician who acted on it. Fortunately, technology means that I could be sat in England and I can speak about Iron Allies with Herman Frank in Germany and David Reese in Italy without eating into my 90 and 180 days allowance. Herman, David, <laughs> welcome to Metal Talk. <laughs> so, I welcome to... <laughs> what an introduction, huh? <laughs> Brilliant. So, um, Herman, uh, you know, technology and Facebook, uh, that played a part in you and David getting together. Can you, can you tell us a story behind that? Yeah. When I, get, when I got, first got in my mind that I would like, love to, like to contact uh, David, I thought to myself, hey, how to find this guy, you know? <laughs> Where does he live? Where is he? Where is he around the world? And thanks, for, thanks to Facebook, there's, you just put in uh, David Reese, then he shows up. I, I send him a message via Messenger and just, had, uh, just wrote, Mr. Reese, uh, it's Herman Franks um, to contacting you. I'm, in, I'm into uh, uh, creating a new band, forming a new band. Do you want to join? Five minutes later, he says, Hi, Mr. Herman Frank, I'm honored. Yes, I want to join. <laughs> Let's talk. Easy like that. Cool, that was cool. fantastic. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, David, you, you, you've you obviously got connections with Herman in Accept, although at different times, yeah. Um, you were aware of his story and you, you, you were excited when he got in touch? Yeah. I mean, uh, oddly enough, we never met in person until a year ago. And we've yeah. crossed paths uh, probably 20 times and missed each other by minutes or days on festivals. But... Uh, I've known of him for 500 years, you know, before <laughs> dinosaurs. <laughs> no, no, I was really, I was really happy that he reached out to me. Cool, cool, cool. Um, uh, Blood In, Blood Out is results released on the 21st of October. And yeah, I have to say, I'm really excited. Um, obviously, David sings um, uh, a little bit different on this than some of his projects in the past. Um, uh, Freezing, I believe, was one of the first tracks that uh, Herman sent to you, David. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was actually the first song. Really? And I so, think, uh, yeah. No, I, I love the um, simplicity of the riff. Yeah, it's really wonderful. Yeah, and I love the way that you've, <laughs> I, I love the way that you layered your vocal on top there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, with what Herman sent you, David, how did how did you approach your parts? What was your what was your plan? Uh, it just uh, we it was eighties metal, and I just I don't know. It just came out of the air, you know. And those things just appear sometimes, and and it just I just grabbed a pen and just started scribbling words down, and then I turned on my fifty-year-old iPhone that I've got, the first one that thank God still works, and I recorded on that. And I think I sent it to you, didn't I, Herman? The idea, the basic, and you said, keep going. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. And then uh, there was another song. Was it Selling Out? It was Selling Out, as I remember, right? And this yeah. was a fantastic one, I guess. Uh, then you recorded the proper version down in Italy, in yeah. a little studio. And I said to myself, we keep this. There was so yeah. much energy and so much freshness in this thing. And I'm... I'm Always a friend of keeping some demo, somebody would call it demo stuff, but mostly it's the same with the guitar and, and, and especially on this song, Selling Out, you would call it a demo version. And I said, that's the final thing. Let's yeah. keep it. Just transfer yeah. it further in the studio and, and, and we are done. Because I, 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 yeah, if you, if you create a song, if you compose a song, for, especially for guitars, then you play the riff in a different way. Mm -hmm. And if I tried so many times in my life that I wanted to record it properly, let's, uh, and it never worked out the same way. It loses the tension, the whatever, mm. whatever you call it. So I'm a really friend of first take, bam, 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 bam. Okay, fine, sounds good to me, keep it. It gives mm -hmm. it it gives it life then, doesn't it? And kind of spontaneity, yeah. yeah, rather than just being something that's kind of manufactured. Exactly. 
Yeah. And that's what you're looking for if you do if you do a record, you know. Yeah. And um, uh, David is such a well 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 known uh, uh, musician, you know. He's able to do anything. And I guess when it comes, as he says, <laughs> his famous line, it comes out of, of the air. Hey, yeah. that you have to keep this moment. Otherwise, yeah. it, uh, otherwise records they sound. There are so many records that sound polished and and yep. and cut it and pasted and whatever yep. you know and back and forward and and tuned or what I, I rhythmically corrected and stuff like that. We don't do. We didn't record like this, as you said. Um, the most people say, oh, you, your band is sounding, a live, if you do a live show, you sound much more aggressive or fresher or you sound different. Wonder mm -hmm. why. Yeah, <laughs> you, yeah, you, should, yeah. you, should, you shouldn't spend that much time in studio, guys. Yeah. <laughs> just bang it, just, just lay it down on the, on, on the computer, these days on computer, in the early days on tape. And David is, is educated to record on tape, tape mm -hmm. on a tape machine in the real ones. And I was educated and, and, and trained to record on a, on a tape machine too. I guess that's that makes a difference. Yeah, uh, Herman, how impressed were you when you heard that first proper studio vocal come in from David? I mean, the quality, sure? the quality I, of his I, voice I, is amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it, I didn't expect it like, like like that. I was overwhelmed, and I said to myself, "That gives to my guitarist a, a, a special sound," mm -hmm. and that's mm. the reason why. I think Iron Ella stands for its own. Yeah. And you, if you listen back, it's you can't compare really to, to I mean, a lot of the, the, these guys, they will compare to whatever bands out of the world. I won't compare to anything. Um, because the, the timbre, the sound of David's voice on top mm -hmm. of these guitars, it's different to, to many, many, many albums. And I really do like He's a native speaker, so he plays around with the rhythm of words, and, and he uses the the the, the very good uh, pronunciation on it or vocals. Uh, this, he, he's creating a melody in it with his with his lyrics, you know. Yes. And I do like the combination of this heavy rock and there's a little bit of bluesy stuff in there. Yep. Yep. Given well, from know, the voice, you got to have a riff. You know, you got to have a melody. To write yeah. a melody too. Yeah, yeah, if there's not a melody there, I don't care how great the lyric is. If there's not a song foundation, it's it's going to be crap. Yeah, you're absolutely I mean, you right. can't you can't polish a pile of shit because you still have a pile of shit. So yeah. if there's something great to start with, yep. you know, um, it's inspiring, man. I haven't been inspired for a long time, and I was inspired. I mean, I, I tell the story a hundred times, but the guy that recorded those vocals. He's a, he's a more of a folk guy. And when he heard Herman's guitar rip, he literally stopped and looked at me and said, who's playing the guitar on this stuff? And I said, Herman Frank. And he goes, man, the dude gets it. It's right yep. here in the left hand. Yep. You know, yep. he's, he's technically proficient as well. This guy yep. acoustically, he's brilliant. And he went, the guy gets it. It's right here. It's how you put your finger on the chord, how you phrase it. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, um, full of surprises, yeah. It's a, a, an absolute wonderful opening, yeah. Um, mm. mo moody kind of, kind of Sabbath esque, just just mm. opening part and a fantastic riff, yeah. And I, I love the way I love the way you you double up your vocals on the chorus, David, yeah. Mm. And then it builds to you know the first fantastic solo section in the album, yeah. That's a that, yeah. That, that's a great song to kick off, yeah. Um, I was, actually, I was actually, actually, Dave, David forced me to play a long, long lead on this one. He said, "Double oh, up, yeah. double up, lies, lies, lies." lies. <laughs> <laughs> I said to him, "I said, Herman, uh, you think the solo is long enough?" And he goes, "It's not long enough." <laughs> <laughs> you asking me? You, you asking me because because we are over forty now. Um, yeah. Hey, dude, dude, you have to think about all the live shows we have to do. I need a break need in a break. between. I need a break. <laughs> I need a Coca Cola break and a nice cool drink of water. Yeah, go ahead, keep playing. No, uh, to, to tell you the truth, I just enjoyed to to jam on this track, and yeah. so I couldn't find any end. If it, if <laughs> if David wouldn't have stopped me, I I still would jam on the track right now. <laughs> Well, 
that's cool. Look, you, 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 for you, me, you, you, got it. You could chuck it. For a, me, a got the, the 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 perfect perfect time uh, mm. beats per minute and stuff like that. Perfect yeah. harmonies. It was yeah. fun to jam around uh, yeah. uh, all yeah, over yeah. these harmonies, you know. Yeah. And as I said, I still would jam right now. <laughs> no, that's that's great. Look, I mean, you could always say, uh, you know, if you if you get your fingers are getting fatigued, you could just chuck in a drum solo or a bass solo, yeah, or sure. something like that. No way, so, chuck it in. <laughs> Bring out um, the wheelbarrow here. And uh, uh, the title track, yeah, "Blood in, Blood Out." That's a real, that's a real epic style about it. Yeah, is mm. is there any kind of um, I, I owe me riff inspiration on there, Herman? I'm always inspired by uh, Tony Iommi. It was one of my, he is still one of my favorites. And when I started to play guitar, maybe in the age of 14, 15, he was around there. And I played this da, 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 Iron Man thing and yeah. all his, I, I tried to, at least I tried to play all this riff mm -hmm. with the, the first band I, I, I formed. And we just, we did a couple of, uh, tried to do a couple of covers of uh, uh, Black Sabbath. He's one of the. He's one of the. He's, he's, he's one of legend. the kind. He's an icon. Of yeah. metal. He is. He is probably the guy. You know. And and I do love his. I, I don't know the right word for it. Is it uh, his pure riffing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's, he's he's not using that many notes or, mm -hmm. or but what he is doing. Wow, simple but wow. He, t he talks about having like, you know, thousands and thousands of riffs at home. Yeah. That he, you know, he, he collects riffs, he says. Yeah. And, and, and like most of them aren't, aren't, aren't that great. And he has to love a riff. Yeah. Have, have you got a book like that, Herman? You know, full of, full of riffs? <laughs> full of surprises. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I can answer yeah. that for you. He's got, I, 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 I've got mountains of riffs here that didn't make the record and they'll probably be yeah. reviewed for the next album. Yeah. Mountains. I mean, uh, uh, these days, I, re I started very early uh, when I was on tour. Uh, at the early days, you got this little cassette recorders, this voice recorder. Yeah. Yeah. I, I used them 20 or 30 years ago. I started using them. And right now, if I wake up in the middle of the night and get an idea, I sang it right now to, to the iPhone and tr try to figure out on the next morning the once so once in a while it works out. And for sure there are there is, but um, and the most difficult part is as I remember we wrote I guess eighteen to twenty songs for this album. Right. And then the, then we asked the, the record company. Uh, would it be possible to release 20 songs? <laughs> they said, are you crazy? Are you out of mind? <laughs> Save your... I mean, we want to have a we want to have a second album, so don't waste it on the first one. <laughs> and then the difficult part started for David and me to choose the 12 out, out of 20 or 18, you know? That was the most... Uh, I don't like this moment. No, no, no. Is I that, didn't that, like that, it. That, that, that's the first time you start to have an argument between you, maybe, or... No. No. Well, it was, it was I, just I like, mean, I actually reminded you. I said, hey, dude, do you remember this one? No. I said, well, I recorded it on the phone and I saved it. He goes, okay, cool. Play from next year. But I, there's, there's, like you said, the 12 that made the album, there's probably at least six or seven that are ripping. Yeah, that nice. We finished melody wise and, and, you know, that we're going to probably look over in six months from now and go, what about this? Because, I mean, look how many times Tony Iommi, like you mentioned, he pulled him out of his hat from 1975 and go, that's a pretty good riff. Yeah. yeah. I mean. And for the running order, we, we didn't argue that that long either. I mean, there are 12 songs, course of, um, used to, to uh, a pair of dices, you know. Hmm. Full so of surprises, I, we both said we picked immediately for opening track. Yeah. yeah. Because cool. of the um, intro riff for, for, for the guitar, it was yeah. supposed to do it. Yeah, it just was right there. Uh, Destroyers of the Night, yeah. I mean, I love David's opening scream there. That's um, that that is uh, that that is going to be an awesome song to play live. Yeah, especially um, especially with the second guitar as well. I mean, what's the plan for dates? Yeah, I mean, you, surely you're going to take this on the road, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, otherwise, we wouldn't have recorded a CD. Yeah, that's the only yeah, that's I mean, the only way. To yeah. Live, live, live. Yeah. 
So we're looking next I'd year. Start, yeah? I started. I started to play music to go out there on the road. You know, mm-hmm. I don't want to sit back home there or in this or spend my my, my days in the studio. That's not a rock and roll life. I really yeah. enjoy to, to to go out there riding a bus, enter the club, and just plug in. Awesome. So we're we looking twenty twenty three then. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. We've had we've got an agent right now out of Berlin working on on dates. There's some on offer right now. Dates. Okay. And uh, uh, we've got a massive media push with AFM. Obviously, mm-hmm. you're one yeah. of them, and uh, it's been extraordinary. I, it's, I mean, I'm, no exaggeration. The response to the album has been extraordinary. I mean, it's. I've heard all day today and Monday and Herman's heard all week because he's doing interviews on days that I'm not. One thing that sticks out to me the most is they say, it doesn't sound like victory. It doesn't sound like accept. It doesn't sound like David Reese solo. You've mm-hmm. created a sound. And I don't even ask them that. It just comes out in the, uh, I mean, they'll say Iomi-ish riffs. You know, Reese does a few Alfred hollers and shouts here and there, but I hear an original sounding record. So that's what we want to present live. And I can't wait. Like he said, I mean, what's the point of sitting on my ass yeah. making albums? I could do 20 albums a year and then what? For what? I mean, I want to tour. I miss touring. It's the only way. Plant your feet in the stage and go. No, it's cool because like when, when I listened to it, yeah, I thought, well, man, I'd, you, you know, you, you just want to be standing in a hall somewhere listening to this. Yeah. 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 And I, and I, I'd not seen, I'd not seen anything out there about, about planning to tour it. So that was why I chucked the question in. Um, Fear No oh, yeah. Evil, Fear No Evil. That's another two guitar belter with a real, uh, it's an up-tempo gem. Yeah. Um, mm, yeah. The, 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 the notes I made, I made, yeah, that this is, um, this is a, a proper heavy metal album, yeah, with aggressive yeah. riffs, great melody, and something you can kind of swing to, yeah, when you play it loud. Yeah, and, and it just drives, we're driving nails. That's what mm-hmm. Herman and I said. That's why Francesco Giovino is a drummer. If a drummer's yeah. not driving nails, then the floor. Yep. You, you, you don't have that attack machine gun rhythm, you know, and you need that for this type of music. You need a drummer who's driving nails through your skull Yes. Literally, with groove, yes. you know, you can pound and go fast all day long with your feet and show off your tricks. But if you don't have that feel, that's the whole ticket, man. Yeah, you gotta I mean, drive nails with it. Yeah, and, and sometimes you you hear some other bands, yeah, with the with the double bass drum going, and it, and it just sounds kind of manufactured and recorded, doesn't yeah, it? I mean, it's you, all you don't, computerized you, and yeah, sampled, you, and yeah, you, you you don't get that at all. Um, I love the stomping heaviness of Martyrs Burn. Yeah, again, wonderful ah, guitar ah. on there. Um, That's dedicated to you, man, you and your care people. That's a song about the Blitzkrieg. Really? <laughs> now, I yeah. need you to clarify something for me, actually, since I'm speaking to a, a Brit. What I've read in my... I'm, I'm big on war history, yeah? Is it true that, say, the elite side of the Londoners, you know, the, the upper echelon of society, when the Blitzkrieg was happening and the bombing and stuff, and the Germans and the English were fighting above, is it true that sometimes there would be tea parties observing this going on with the sirens would happen, and they were kind of out of the dangerous industrial areas. But people would actually sit and observe and watch this buzzing ab- above their city. Is that true? Well, we're English. We always drink tea. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> tea with a little scotch. But I mean, I read and I've studied a lot about it, and there, there are some stories where, oh, love, they're fighting again. Let's go outside and have a spot of tea. And, and they would not be really in any danger because the bombings were taking effect on the industrial complex of, 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 of the UK, mm-hmm. obviously. And the wealthy could actually observe the martyrs burn. It's, you know, take, pull up a chair and learn and watch the martyrs burn. And it's got that Sabbathy kind of, you know, groove, you know, that dirge, you know, pounding in your head. I just pictured the Blitzkrieg in my mind because I watched this interview with a, with a retired British uh, RAF guy. And I said, Jesus. He goes, yeah, there'd be people sitting around at tables, you know, drinking tea, watching us duke it out, you know. Well, look, David, you, you can quote me on this, you know. Uh, we, we drink tea for everything, yeah? And also, mm. when we're having cucumber sandwiches, we cut the crusts off the bread, you know. So yeah, you need to, I need to have this. I've, I know doctors that can help you with that. But the crust <laughs> is the best part. <laughs> So we've we've gone we've gone um 
<laughs> we've, we've, we've gone slightly off topic, yeah. But oh. um, so uh, it's a question for Herman, really. You know, when you when you yeah. heard when you hear the vocal that, that that David's putting on something like Martha's Burn, yeah, does that ever uh, did that ever uh, make you? Kind of go back and uh, and revisit, or give you an, uh, a different idea, or a slight change for some of your guitar parts, or it just no, nah. or he nailed it. I was so that was one of uh, I was very surprised. Uh, he didn't rather mention change some some chorus or some some bridge or something or just some verse, and I never got the feeling you had that David should change a melody or something. Um, I mean, he was well prepared to enter the studio. We recorded the most parts, uh, vocal parts in, 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 in Hanover. Mm -hmm. And we had been sitting around there and he, he just showed up 11 or whatever a.m. And then for one or two hours and that, that's it. And we, we just are not even criticized on performance. That's it. No, it was, it was uh, you know, when you're singing through the glass and a guy like Herman, you know, Herman's pretty good, got it in his mind what he wants, mm -hmm. you know, and yep. I would say like this, and he, you could see Herman sitting in the back lounge chair, you know, with his head down, <laughs> studying what I'm doing, and if he didn't like something, his head would pop up and go, ah, change just a little bit here and hold that yeah. little bit longer. But you can feel as a singer if the guy behind the desk and the guy that's your partner in the band, heads are popping. Yeah. You know, and you yep. walk back yep. in the room and go, how was that? And they go, what do you mean, how was that? Fuck yeah, <laughs> next one. You know, and, and you go, okay. <laughs> so we recorded a bunch of the vocals and then we had a, a, a really great singer named Nicholas come in and do some harmonies with me. Okay. To yep. Kind of fatten it up and color it up. And Herman yep. did some backgrounds on it as well. Um, it just it was expeditious, man, because we knew what we wanted. Mm -hmm. I mean, her, I mean, Francesco nailed those songs, and this is no lie. He had fractured his left wrist, his snare hand, I think three months before he came in the studio. I mean, a really bad break. He had, had, re, had uh, done his rehab on his arm, and I remember Arna and Noron sitting at the desk, and they were doing drums. And you know, to keep in mind, he did each take three to four times, right? right. And we drove there, him and I. Plus, you know, 15 hours of our day, not that easy for an older chaps. He gets there, sets up his kit in the studio. We take a quick sleep. The next morning, he's in there getting sounds and blah, blah, blah. And Arna looked at me after about eight hours and said, do you realize the impact and the attack and the power on the snare has not diminished the whole day? Wow. 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 He hit that at the same tension and power. And I went, yeah. He goes, man, because a lot of producers are going, oh, he's, he's at it. He's worn out. Or a singer, you know, his voice is getting tired. Let's do this tomorrow. But he attacked it, even with that injured arm. It, 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 it amazed me. Wow. I mean, he sounds a monster, yeah? So, I mean, you've got blood on the land, yeah? So that's, you've, you've got yeah. the double, you've got the double bass drum in there and, and it's real kind yeah. of in-your-face beauty, you know? And 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 that, that double bass drum, yeah? It, it, it sounds, you know, it sounds really atmospheric, really, really epic. Yeah. It, it's it's the most, it's the, the, you know, the opposite end of the spectrum to kind of mm. uh, pro program drums or anything like that. Yeah. Um, there, there's also a really chantable chorus on there. That would be another uh, cool song to play live. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that actually is becoming a, a, a well, I'd say media favorite. I'm, right. I've asked about Blood on the Land all the time. I don't know, Herman. We might have to talk to the to the powers that be and make another video. I mean, that, <laughs> that song is. I mean, that one. Maybe we have to lot. talk to them. Maybe we have to talk to them about to do a couple of videos. <laughs> Maybe because I mean, it's. It, but I do hear blood on the land. Honestly, I, yeah. all the time. It's got that yeah. Iron Maiden. Da, 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 yeah, yeah, da, yeah. Da. yeah. But it's we also will have some, we, some. We will have some videos uh, in the uh, up, up from the first live show. Oh, yeah. And our next video is Destroyers of the Night coming on October yeah. 20th. Ooh, Don't right. forget. Right. Don't forget. We'll be on that. We'll be on that. Um, I, I just come back to Blood on the Land as well. You've got the double bass drum there, but it's it, 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 it's not like power all the way through. There, there's kind of the layers. Mm. I, I actually love the, the whole kind of drum approach to that song. Yeah. It's not just like one homework. total in your face. Yeah. You've done it. Uh, nightmares in my mind. Yeah. Um, 
the, the, the kind of style of riffing at the start. Yeah. I mean, that, that's another crack and song. Yeah. Um, I, I love the vocal on that. And there's some great changes in pace as well. Mm. Um, Truth Never Mattered, a uh, powerful riff. I, I, I love the structure and the mix of the guitars. Yeah, it's quite intoxicating when you listen to it. This will be another great live track. Um, yeah. The, the solo you on know, that. Can I, can I make a comment about Truth Never Matters? Yeah, go on. There's an old quote by a famous writer, and I was telling Herman today, actually, we had a conversation yeah. in between media, and it goes <laughs> like this. A lie makes it nearly halfway around the world before a man can put the boot of truth on one foot. And that's basically what it's about. It's like truth never seems to matter lyrically in the song. People mm -hmm. would rather listen to you lie all day than really get to it. And then we all looked at each other in the studio and I said, can I please put the liar queen thing there with harmonies? And yep. they all said, I don't know what you're talking about. And then we did it one time and I go, yeah, that right there, liar. You know? <laughs> so, yep. Yeah, man. I mean, that song is, I think... I mean, I'm sorry, man, but I just love the whole album. No, oh, that's fine. That that that's fine. <laughs> I, I I mean, I was one of the things I was thinking of uh, the first time I listened to that track. Yeah, when when you get to the guitar solo, yeah, um, I kind of imagine kind of um, you know, you, you know, Herman, when you when when you're playing that kind of sort of complex, changeable solo, yeah, that's that's one of those kind of almost goosebumpy. Yeah, I want to jump up off my seat. Thanks yeah, so much. I mean, that, Thank that, that's, you. You, you, you know to kind of work through that yeah and and then kind of cut that uh in the studio that, that must be a wonderful feeling as a guitarist mm. that's so that's what, what what you must live for as a guitarist really so yeah. I, I, I just, as, as i said i just like, like to play guitar and the most of most of the times when i start jamming around on, on, on a lead part i don't start thinking or i don't um um do me I don't calculate or something like that, mm -hmm. you know. A couple of guitar players, oh, this is in the key of whatever. And I can put a, a, a arpeggio in in with mid diminished what uh, I don't know which numbers uh, they, they do. And I, I'm not a player like this. I'm more like old school plug in record, push record and try yeah. to get something done. And you it's have not, to have it in. You have just have to have it in your in your heart, in your yeah. in your head, mm. in your mind. Yeah. And what comes out, great. Uh, I, I mean, a couple of them. The the mostly the the whole lead is more or less. A, it happens often that it's not just a one take because it's mm -hmm. not played properly in this technical uh, size. You you. Uh, it's nearly impossible to play everything totally correct in the first take mm -hmm. but the idea mostly is there yep and if you won't have it on the on the second or third or maybe the fourth try then stop mm. good no, point that's, that's really cool to know that you kind of play from the heart yeah and, and with your emotions yeah, yeah and, and and just let what, what what's natural natural happen and i um, also do and i also do, do do this for years live if i have to if i if you know on a live show i just have the feeling oh, i would like i would love to do a, a different lead today a different mm -hmm. solo on this one i just do it <laughs> and, yeah. and all the musicians turn around what the, what the heck <laughs> is, is he doing now but uh, mostly i stop at the, at the right right time yeah that's, a good <laughs> that's important I worked that yeah. work. I, uh, work. I, I said mostly. Yeah. <laughs> <Once> I, <laughs> and, I and, uh, and can you imagine the drummer's face if I won't stop at the right time? <laughs> but then I he work. just he has to it. follow. I turn around and, and he, he, he's my, he looks my, my face and he knows, okay, another round, another round. Yeah. <laughs> that, that'll be when he breaks his other wrist. Yeah. David, I mean, be prepared. Work. Be prepared work. to go. <laughs> work, work for Hendrix. Work for Hendrix. Um, we, yeah. we are legends. You and I finishes up the album. Yeah, that's a fantastic song. That, another really kind of flashy solo, and then that mm. kind of like epic last minute or so with all the chanting and a, a great finish. It's a, it's a good bookend to the album. Great bookend to the album. It'd be a Thank great you. bookend to a live set. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, uh, it's one of my favorites and another one that people are always bringing up. They say it's a yeah. great bookend finish to a record because that's mm -hmm. kind of tough to do. 
Yeah, yeah. You start here and your whole goal with the record is to keep moving. Up. Yep. You don't want to get these you know, flat lines and then try to regain momentum. It's like a live set, you know, you want to kick them in the balls and leave their balls hurting when you walk off, you mm-hmm. know, and it's and doing a record. And I think what happened with this album was the songs were of that quality where we could have put anything at the end and it would have worked, if you know what I mean. But that yep. was seemed to be the icing on the cake. <laughs> yeah. And, it, and it's, it's a hard thing to do, you know, for me. First song, last song. It's always, and then that middle part of the album. I didn't find that work on this record. You know, like Herman said, it wasn't really even discussed. Boom. He said, all right, you pick it, do it. I'll do this. I want this song here. You pick the rest. Okay. (laughs) I think you, I think Herman said, full of surprises first, and we are legend last. I remember that. Remember that? I said, good choice. Let me fill in the holes. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, Blood In, Blood Out, Iron Allies. It's released on 21st October via AFM Records. Yeah, a couple of weeks to go. Yeah, you must be um, you must be getting excited now, boys. Yeah, man. The I'm talking to great. And I, uh, today, I, you know, David, D- D- David, by the way, today we get the first re- review. Yeah. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, Denmark. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And it's an honest, I mean, uh, I kind of translated it. It was really detailed in the uh, definition of what they heard. Sonically, musically, everything. They, they really dissected uh, each song and what they experienced when they listened to it. We've heard a guy uh, actually, Stephen, say when he heard it the first time, he started pu- dry punching the air. He was shadow boxing and broke into a sweat and had to take a shower. And I remember Herman <laughs> called me after the interview going, was that a compliment or was what was he talking about? I go, dude, the guy, that's one of the greatest you can get. When a guy has to quit listening and he's punching the air because he's so yeah. wound up, I said, Wow, you know. Well, I I, I wrote down I, I wrote down it makes me want to grow my hair long again, buy a bullet belt and frighten the wife <laughs> by playing in the kitchen. Get a bullet belt. Be like Lemmy, show up at your friend's house and just stick a belt in his hand and say, You're in the band. Yeah. <laughs> Um, AFM Records, yeah. I mean, we've chatted in the past, David, and you've had some issue with record labels. AFM Records, uh, that, that sounds like they're really supportive, yeah. I, I mm-hmm. think uh, record label stuff is that a bit different now to how the interactions were a few years ago. All's good there. Well, I can tell you, I, I wanted to be on the label for a long time, and I was unsuccessful. Um, but when I started working with Herman, Mysterically, the, the door magically opened and they put their arms around it. I uh, met with some of the, the bosses there at a gig I did not too long ago that Herman was at. And they walked right up to me and we spent 30, 40 minutes talking about how much they love the album, um, how excited they are, how behind it they are. And that feels really good, man. I mean, I left people standing wanting autographs. I said, they can wait. I, I want to talk to you. What do you, what's your vision on the record? Mm-hmm. And they were like, we absolutely love it. And they've been great to us. And Herman was right. I mean, he's been with them for years. And uh, we had other offers on the table, but they came through strongly, the strongest. And uh, I'm glad we did it. Cool, cool. And uh, it's a bit too early to be talking about the second album. Um, Look, I wish you the best of luck. I, I really love the album. Um, you know, you certainly you, deserve some 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 good luck for it. And any message to the fans? UK, we're coming. We don't give a <laughs> fuck about Brexit. We don't give a fuck about Brexit. We're going to make it work. Thank you. You mentioned it that we're coming back. <laughs> we'll get back. We'll get back if we have to swim. <laughs> Well, Dave, David's probably all right. He's probably still got a U.S. passport, haven't you? So, um, well, well, no, yeah, that, it doesn't help you when you, no, it doesn't help you when you come in. So that, that's me too. <laughs> no, it's, it's a fucking nightmare. But uh, I mean, it's not going to keep us from playing rock and roll. I mean, they're trying everything they can to cut a, cut us off at the neck. You know, with yeah. everything, music in this world, we're not going to surrender. I was asked today about it. How do you deal with all this? I said I don't even think about it. Neither does Herman. We're determined. We are focused, and uh, we're going to maneuver in between the bowling pins that uh, on that, and uh, we're going to make it work. I mean, it's the only way to present this record in this band. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah. I'll be Nothing to add. 
<laughs> I'll be down the front with my camera and then rocking out the back with my bullet belt. Brilliant. You Guys, thank be. you so much. Thank you so much. It's thank a real so pleasure. Much, and, I, and I wish you the best of luck. Yep. Thanks very much. Bye-bye, everybody. It was a pleasure talking to you. Bye. Ciao. Okay. Cheers, guys. Thank you.